If you've ever tried to find out just how fast your microcontroller can switch things on and off, you might have thought to yourself, where does this limitation come from? Or you might have thought, what determines how fast my clock is ticking? Or what determines how often my multimeter refreshes its display values? The answer to such timing related questions are so called oscillators. Basically, an electronic circuit that can create periodic alternating voltage signals, like a square, triangle or sine wave. These are then used as a clock signal for a device or as a carrier wave for radio communication or other data exchange through the air. So in this video, let's talk about the most popular oscillator types, which you can also easily build at home. Let's get started. First off, relaxation circuits, especially with RC components. This A-stable multivibrator is a classic and rather simple example. The main principle is about using two capacitors, C1 and C2, which get charged alternating through a resistor to a certain threshold voltage of the transistor, in this case around 0.3 volts. This way, the transistor becomes conductive and discharges capacitor C1 while the other one, C2, gets charged. Once C2 then reaches the threshold voltage, the cycle repeats with the other transistor and we successfully have created a rectangle waveform which is visualized by the LEDs. If we would decrease the resistance or capacitance, the charging and discharging process would get shorter and the frequency of the rectangle wave increases. An IC, which also implements the same core idea, is the always popular 555 timer. These consist of two comparators, two logic ends and one logic OR gate and a RS flip-flop. So not that easy to explain right now, but on the other hand super easy to use. By connecting a 100 nanofarad capacitor, a 680 ohm resistor and 150 kilo ohm potentiometer, we can create a stable and variable rectangle wave again by charging and discharging the capacitor periodically. In this case though, the threshold values are 66 and 33% of the supply voltage. And of course, you can increase the frequency again up to a certain degree, but eventually at some point it is not that pleasant to look at. That is where we use LC resonators, aka LC tank circuits, to create very high frequencies. But before going into detail about those, I recommend that you should watch my videos about capacitors and inductors. Firstly, the capacitor gets charged up to the maximum voltage and has its maximum electrostatic energy stored. After disconnecting the power supply, the capacitor slowly discharges through the inductor and since the current through an inductor cannot change instantly, it also slowly builds up until the coil has reached its maximum of stored magnetic energy. This energy then converts back into the electrostatic energy of the capacitor by charging it up in reverse and the cycle repeats again. Simultaneously, we also created a sine voltage and current along the way. But in reality, this oscillation does not last that long, because parasitic resistance is everywhere and converts some of the power into heat. We also see that the tank circuit oscillated with a specific frequency, which is called the resonance frequency. This occurs when the reactants of the coil and capacitor are the same and cancel each other out. As a consequence, the voltage or current in an LC circuit can exceed the initial applied values of the power supply, but only near the resonance frequency. But that is not the main point right now. We still need to find a way to feed the circuit energy at the right time so that the oscillation does not stop. This can be achieved by connecting the output of the tank circuit to the input of an amplifier, like this NPN transistor. By choosing the amplification factor just right, the output of the amplifier delivers a stable megahertz sine wave. But as a side note, building such oscillators on a breadboard is not recommended, due to rather loose connections and parasitic capacitance. 
Just like the RC methods, we can change the inductance and capacitance to create all kinds of different frequencies, necessary for different tasks. But if we need even more stable frequencies, we can also use a crystal oscillator. It acts just like an LC resonator, but also uses the mechanical vibrations of a piezo crystal and creates, in this case, a stable 16 MHz signal. The necessary amplifier circuit is very similar to the one before and you often see such crystals next to a microcontroller to set its processing speed. And with that being said, you already know quite a bit about oscillators. I hope you learned something new. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome. Consider supporting me through my Patreon campaign to keep such videos coming, stay creative and I will see you next time.